Tip Tut. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tut. Today we're taking a look at how to get this nice water droplet effect inside After Effects. Um, this kind of ring that slowly expands um, and gets smaller in line width as time goes on. Um, but also how to get this nice ripple effect nice and easily where the lines are kind of wobbled rather than smooth. Um, and what I've got here is just a nice little animation of a float uh, just bobbing into some water very flat design kind of thing and then I've just got the uh, water droplet which is what we're going to be taking a look at today now the float is just a shape with some positions on it uh, position keyframes and the line is just uh, a singular line that follows the position um, parented to position of the float and it's got I think some um, zigzag or, or, or wiggle effects applied to it um, wave warp applied to uh, the string to make it look like it's actually bending in the in the movement um, and that's all there is to that so we won't look at that but we will look at the important bit which is this sort of uh, ripple effect here okay so the first thing we're going to do is pop everything into a folder called old and put all of that away in there so that when we create a new composition with the following parameters 1920 by 1080 we'll make this 30 fps and we'll make it five seconds that's fine um, and we'll call this one tut for tip tut and there we go we've now got a background color which we probably don't want so what we'll do is we'll grab a solid make it that nice blue color and just hit okay and that gives us a lovely blue background which could very well be water if you're so inclined to believe it now let's look at creating this droplet effect then First of all, what you want to do is create a circle um, and you want to make sure that it is white um, or near enough, perhaps just a bit flatter than white, just so you can get a nice bit of texture to the uh, to the drawing. And then you want to just draw yourself a circle uh, in the middle of your composition. Uh, I'm going to use motion V2 here to center the anchor point. You can use the pan behind tool to do the same thing. It's just not quite as quick. And then you want to put it in the middle with 960 and 540. Now, with that circle planted, farm, uh, planted firmly in the middle, we want to hit the scale by bringing up uh, S to bring up scale and drop a keyframe in at the beginning of your animation. Now, if you move on 40 frames and from PC, that's Command Shift and Control, uh, sorry, Control Shift on a PC rather, and Command Shift on a Mac, um, and then just hit uh, Control Shift Right, and that moves you forward 10 frames. Do that four times, you get 40 frames. Simple. Uh, then you want to drop a keyframe there. Now that gives us uh, enough time to sort of do an animation that's not super quick but not super slow. Could look like a water droplet. So head back to your first frame and hit Scale zero and then you can see we've got a nice little increasing in size circle let's add some easing to those keyframes with the right click keyframe assistant easy ease head over to our speed graph here select the two points and just create a nice fast to slow animation that's freaking out a bit because i'm trying to uh, record my screen and encode and render at the same time so you'll get a nice smooth animation that does exactly that now you want to duplicate that layer and offset it by one, two, three, four frames, I'd say. And as you can see now, what we've actually got is one circle increasing in size and then another circle increasing in size on top of it just a little bit later. And then what you want to do is take this layer underneath and just choose Alpha Matte Shape Layer 2. Now, uh, sorry, Reverse Alpha Matte Shape Layer 2, so Inverted Matte. And um, what that does is that removes the shape from the top from the shape underneath. And as you can see, as time goes on, Bam, we get that nice ripple. Ignore that flicker. What you'll actually get is that. A nice timed ripple that increases in size. Lovely. Now, you could call that done if you wanted it to be nice and simple. You could pre-compose those two and then get a, um, a little thing that you can duplicate and move around. However, we wanted to make it look like it's a bit more ripply, if that makes sense, since it's supposed to be in water. So we are, in fact, going to select both those layers and pre-compose them. Pre-comp 2, that's a fine name, doesn't matter. Now, if we click inside that um, pre-comp by double-clicking, uh, you can see that we've got our two layers here. What I'm quickly going to do is draw an area of interest around those in a perfect square by holding shift and um, oopsie, ignore that on the microphone there uh, and just adjust this so that the circles are pretty much in the middle and we give them a bit of breathing room okay and then I'm going to crop my comp to region of interest and what that does is it just creates my composition to be the size of the ripple uh, oh dear that doesn't uh, 
crazy with the size of the ripple at its largest point, which is there roughly. So let's give it a bit of breathing room and do the same thing. Uh, crop comp. There we go. So it creates a composition through the size of the ripples that we need. And that just saves a bit of um, memory and makes your, uh, uh, your screen's a bit smaller, which is great. Now, the last thing you want to do is actually go to the last keyframe and press Alt, close square bracket. And what that'll do is that cuts off the layers at um, the end so that they disappear. Uh, and if you want to, if you want to be very clean about it and completely save on the file size, you can actually crop trim comp to work area and then you've got the only part of the thing that you need so let's head back to our main composition you can see here now that we've got our water droplet in the middle of the screen which is perfect exactly what we want and we'll just make sure that it's exactly in the middle again and it is that's fine looks a little bit offset but i think that's because i did it offset with inside the pre-comp now what we want to do is we just pop back to our old one here we can see for example that these ripples in the water are actually wobbly and the way we've achieved that is if we go up to the pre-comp here that we can see and if we go inside and choose these layers you can see we've got roughened edges applied to uh, both of these layers within the pre-comp so what you can do is you can either apply that directly to the pre-composition on top if you just type in roughen uh, and drag it over you can see that it'll automatically roughen up the edges, making it look a little bit like paper. Um, we don't want paper though, we want water. So in fact, we want to uh, decrease the border um, and decrease, uh, sorry, increase the edge sharpness. Now I know that seems counterintuitive, but what that does is makes the flat design side of things work, stops the blurriness. Fractal, uh, excuse me, fractal influence is sort of the degree to which it wobbles um, and scale is of course the intensity of which that wobbles and if you see here you just grab that scale and increase it until the lines look wobbly but smooth you start to get the effect that we're looking for here you get a bit of fractal displacement and you get a bit of line wobble now you can also offset that you can stretch the width and height make it very complex or very simple um, just by increasing the um, or decreasing the complexity. I usually think that a complexity around three or four tends to work okay. Maybe that's a bit much for you. I don't know. But that's pretty much the, all there is to it. Um, let's just quickly trim this composition so you don't have to render it and hit pre-render. And you can see there that we've got a very nice looking water droplet. Um, perhaps it's going a bit too fast, but in the meantime, in sort of for now, that looks fine. We can always just adjust the speed later by going back inside and adjusting the keyframes. Um, and that is all there is to it for water droplets inside AE. Uh, many, many places this can be used. Uh, I've just used it for exactly what it is, and I figured that I might as well do a tutorial on it. Um, and hey, maybe you learned something. Maybe you didn't. But I hope you did. And if you did, consider sticking around. There'll be more like this to come. So I really appreciate it, guys, and I'll see you next time. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.